Hey, I'm Nashi. I'm Rizlar. And I'm Frosty. Welcome back to the Value Pack. Hold on, I have to gear, I have to gear check Nash right now. All right, that is some bull jab. Dude, he CC'd me out of dance. What's happening? Oh, Rizlar. People look at you like you're crazy, and they refuse to admit <laughs> that it's pay to win, and just scream that it's pay to convenience! It's pay to convenience! Big money, big money, big money, big, big money. money! Oh shit, we got it! We fucking got it! And welcome everybody to another episode of The Value Pack. Uh, kind of a big show today. Unfortunately, I won't be around for all of it. Uh, I do have to dip a little bit early, but Frosty and Nayashi will be here for the entire show, and we're going to try and hit some of the bigger stuff that we want to talk about early on. Um, but before we get into that kind of stuff, uh, including Sage Awakening, I uh, want to thank our lovely patrons, Infrax Hawaiian, I Has Issues, Jeremy Johnson, Lord Carrot, Mayo Knight, Minaria, Slytech, and Talus X Septum. Thank you guys and everybody else who supports us on Patreon and on our individual Twitch streams. We appreciate you guys for everything you do. Um, <clears throat> so Nayashi's AFK at the moment, but because uh, I'm short on time, we kind of just decided to start and mm -hmm. he'll join later. Uh, but the first thing we have to talk about that hopefully he won't be gone for the entirety of is the Sage Awakening is out. Now, unfortunately, we're both killing Nightmare Zarka right now, so we can't <laughs> really pull up footage at it's the moment. Almost, it's almost dead, dude. Burn it, Also, guys. my game just crashed. Are you kidding me? Oh, get Come fucked. on, dude. Get fucked, dude. He's, no. He's what do you 10%. mean suspended? Oh, it's dead. Oh, no. Okay, well, let's just, uh, what was your, uh, what was your first impression when you saw it? Uh, we're going to watch the video together. Yeah, but we'll, we we'll watch the, we'll watch the teaser trailer, not the spotlight. Like, I'll have the spotlight playing in the background while we talk, but, um, we'll only actually watch the teaser trailer together because it kind of, it just shows more. Um, yeah, yeah. But my initial impression is I'm actually kind of shocked that it doesn't really demo any ranged abilities except for i guess technically the giant lightning thing where it's a huge aoe um the second i saw javelin i was like oh shit this is going to be a ranged class and there's not really any range like anytime he throws the spear it's only to gap close and jump to where the spear goes yeah but it doesn't that is kind of that is kind of surprising now that you mention it but they could have just, I don't know, they, they may have just not shown anything. They may have not shown anything. I don't know, I was like going through a nip, you know how I get, dude. I start investigating the video. <laughs> and uh, from what frame I saw... Frame by frame. Yeah. <laughs> and from what I saw, it looked like they demo about seven abilities and four or five flows. Um, and most kits, and again, I went and did some digging. Most kits have somewhere between like 11 and 15 abilities and like four and seven flows. So it actually does show a lot of the kit. Um, not everything, but a lot. So I don't know. Um, all right, here we go. Let's do the, uh, let's do the teaser now. I Got couldn't this. log in before it died, so I didn't get any loot. That's right, dude. It didn't give anything good. Probably not, in all honesty. All right, here, I'll do this so you can see it what I'm seeing at the same time and have the <clears> same <throat> audio. Um, so this is the teaser trailer that came out um, one day after the like demo spotlight, their League of Legends spotlight Ew. that they did. <laughs> yeah. We're watching the teaser trailer. Hop in.
All right. So that's the uh, that's the Sage trailer. Um, it looked pretty fucking cool to me. I I was I was excited. Um, I Nayashi, what were your initial thoughts on on the trailer when you saw Sage? Um, I thought it was much faster than we originally thought it was going to end up being. Like you know, with its pre awakening succession, so that was pretty nice to see. Um, I think a lot of players will find that pretty attractive. Because it looks very smooth. It looks cool. You know, it's got that Zeus feel to it. Lightning mm -hmm. God kind of thing. Um, the diving down looks like it'll be probably pretty good for, like, uh, large scales and whatnot. So, yeah, I mean, it looks looks cool. Is this the straw that broke the Mayo's back? No. You're not rolling? Um, I mean, doesn't necessarily make me more interested in Mewa. How do you feel about being the inferior spirit class now? <laughs> well, it gives me it gives me the right to complain whenever I feel the, like it. The last thing Mewa had going for it, and they stripped it from you. <laughs> well, I mean, technically, it's more of a javelin than a spear, especially how he's holding it, you know? They say spear, but it's like kind of weird based on how he's holding it. It's a magical spear. So, uh, Reza, I do have to, before I get into your thoughts... I do have to point something out that someone pointed out to me. Um, I can't, I think it was a Leary, but um, they were like, hey, Frosty, didn't Reslar say this wasn't going to be lightning? And now I have to yeah. ask you about that. Well, I said I didn't think it was lightning, that I thought it was going to be whatever that energy is that like powers the ancient weapons that I don't think is lightning. Um, maybe it is. I have no idea. I'm not like a lore person, but okay. I don't think it's lightning. So it might be. Do you still think this is not lightning? Uh, no, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's definitely lightning. Okay. All right. All right. You scared me for a second. I was waiting for him there. to like try to get was, some. You scared me for a second there. Uh, all right. I still don't know, like, here's the thing, though, like, I don't know if it's lightning that powers, like, the ancient weapons. Like, I think is it's it, just his, like, I think it's just his power. Like, that's what I don't know, is like, because that's actually what I said, is I said, I think this is the same power as what powers the ancient weapons, which I don't think is lightning. But this but... definitely is lightning, so is this the same, like, is it lightning that powers the ancient weapons? It's like that's that's the part that I don't I don't know about. Good question. I don't know. But um so that getting past all that, what are your thoughts on on this on this class so far? I heard that you untagged something because of this trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I tagged my wizard. I don't remember when. Um and then I took it to like two node wars and a uh, couple rbfs and then this trailer dropped and i was like yeah no i i i want to try this because this looks fun uh i think i don't know it it doesn't look super powerful to me um but again like you can never really tell from these types of trailers how strong yeah, it's gonna they're, be really they're always fighting mobs that you can kill with like 200 ap so yeah, well, and I don't necessarily mean the damage. I mean, obviously, you can't tell, like, protections and CCs from a PvE trailer. Um, but I don't know. I It looks fun, which is the main thing that I'm interested in. Uh, it looks fun, and it looks cool as shit. Yeah. Um. So for me, I was pretty sure when I saw, when I first saw the, the lightning javelin, I was like, I think I'm ready to go back to Kuno. And then I saw the Spotlight <laughs> trailer, and I was like, all right, these animations are really fucking cool, but this looks really slow. And, like, there's no way I'm going to have fun playing this. But their teaser, the actual combat trailer, made it look like the way everything flows together actually looks relatively fast. Like, not Kuno speed or anything like that, which is fine. I don't need Kuno it speed. It seems smooth enough. Yeah, I just need it to not be Sage Succession. Funky. Succession <laughs> Sage, yeah. Yeah, I just need it to not be Succession Sage. And the way they flow everything together looks really cool and uh, like fast enough that you're not going to feel like you're slow debuffed the entire time you're playing the class, which is what Sage Succession feels like to me. 
So, um, yeah, it looks really fucking badass. I, I'm I'm super excited to play it. I'm way more hyped to play it than I thought. That combat trailer made me like, dude, I actually cannot wait for Wednesday. I think it's gonna be super fun to grind on. I'm really excited to see if if the kit just at face value looks like it's gonna be good in Node War because some of these skills look like they're gonna be really fun in Node War. Um, and I'm curious if it's gonna be good at one v one. It has a grab. It seems to have decent movement. Uh, and it has like a gap close. Uh, and I don't know. Seems like it might it's, actually have is, decent utility. Is the grab actually confirmed? Yeah, so yes. the grab happens at 23 seconds in the teaser trailer. Um, if you watch the teaser trailer, he grabs... I watched it, but I, I, I don't know if I see a grab there, honestly. No, he grabs the, the, the small mob. He grabs literally the only grabbable mob, and it's like just a single target grab ability. Yeah, it's definitely a grab well, in that, I hope in that so. clip. I don't want it to be a multi-grab ability. <laughs> yeah, and then after the grab lands, he does some flow and punches down. I think that flow it seems to you can use that flow after like everything. Yeah, that's definitely a grab. He literally like is like the same way like Hash and Nova do. He's like force choking that little mob. Yeah, that's definitely a grab. <laughs> it's definitely a grab. Uh but Dude, also the grab finish animation, like where he hits him with the spear after, looks so fucking cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, and there's to say, I'm not surprised. There's a couple other things that are really interesting. These, so I don't know if you guys are looking at any of the videos right now, but at at 30 seconds in the teaser trailer or the sorry the the combat trailer, like that star, that stone star thing that pops out and shoots lightning, looks so cool to me. Yeah. Whatever that is too. looks so badass and I cannot wait to try that out. Um it looks really, really uh, cool. It's on it's on the two hundred too. It's it's kinda hard to see, but when he does the two hundred at the very end, you actually can see it on the ground. It's it's kinda at the bottom of the screen, you can't see it super well. But it's at the it's on the ground and you see it click like in place before he actually like lands, essentially. So it like it appears on the ground and then it like clicks into like place basically and then he slams onto the ground. It's really interesting. It's really yeah. cool. Um this part at what time is this? At 56 seconds. This is the 100, right? Uh yeah, almost certainly. Or like pulls down one giant laser beam in the middle. Almost certainly. <laughs> from the sky. Yeah. And then the 200 what? is the last thing at the very end. Yeah. Watch the Watch Wait, they the typically 200. don't show the two hundreds though. No, yeah, they do. Remember? Like, do you see uh, on the maybe not in the old trailers. What? See what? What part? The big. Uh, oh, in the two like hundreds. Let me look. Hold on. Yeah. So look, look at the ground, like underneath. Him, oh, kinda, you're right. The screen. It spawns on and the and you floor. can see right before he like jumps down and like smashes the ground. It like like clicks in place or some shit. It's like really weird, but it's kind of cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, that looks cool. The one cool in the, uh, the other trailer or the the spotlight video when they pass through the whatever they are what are they basilisk mobs like two of them spawn and they look really fucking badass and I'm like really dying to know what the hell they are um it's probably pet damage but yeah it looks like it has a bunch of decent gap closers. Um, the animations look fun. The AoEs obviously look big. It does also look like you can back out of some stuff. You don't look like you're fully committed. Like in the in the preview demo where he does the giant lightning storm, like he sits in it for a long time. But in the teaser, it looks like he cancels out of it um, early in one of the clips. Um, so I don't know. It, it kind of looks uh, it looks pretty cool to me. I, I'm actually really, really excited for this class, and it looks so fun to grind on. Like, that much AoE yeah, It does just... look like it'll be fun to grind on, because the pack-to-pack -pack movement seems pretty solid. Yeah, and it also has a uh, a pull skill. Like, when he at the at Crescent Shrine, when he just zaps that entire group of mobs in the background. Um... Or, yeah, they kind of, like, mean, the almost some areas those, ability. Those pull skills might not necessarily be all that effective, right? Like... Are the Hadoom uh, the grind spots usually pretty affected by the uh, uh No, I mean, you don't... You, 
No, no, not a pull, not not a vacuum. It's a pull skill in that like he can tap. He can, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. He yeah, can wake just up mean, every like, a mob. Traditional yeah, it looks it, it looks like Mark a Shadow or Chain Lightning when he's at Crescent gotcha. Shrine. Sorry, I heard at, I heard um, some people say he has a vacuum, but I I don't see it. I don't know where they're seeing it. Yeah. Granted, I didn't like dissect the trailer really, but I I, I didn't see one. Yeah, the Bassy mob I've seen when one of those laser things spawns above and one spawns behind him, it just looks so badass, dude. He does have, I, and I know some people. I saw some people complaining about it. He has a almost block jump, which yes. is interesting. Um, yeah. Yep. He also here. Here's an example of some of the stuff that's sped up. So like. At 10 seconds, he does this skill where he slams his spear into the ground and then raises up and does like one hit and then the flow. And then there's another part in the video. Let me see if I could find it. I think it's against the mansion mobs. Um, is it? Um, let me find it. Hold on. Yeah, uh, no, I don't know. I don't know where to find it now. I forget. I forget exactly where it was at. But he he does like the same ability that's in that clip right after a dash, and it seems to come out like instantly instead of like being slow. Like after a dash, it's really fast. Let me see if I could find it. Do do. I don't know. I don't remember now. I should have memorized it, time stamped it. But um yeah, it does look like like either some of his movement or some of the actual skills themselves are gonna speed up some of the stuff. And yeah, the block jump thing, yeah, so he can throw a spear up in the air and basically decide if he wants to do the long, like far range leap or jump behind a, a target that's like nearby. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, no, that having that versatility is really good for like large scale one VX kind of situations. So, I have a question, or I, I, I have a discussion point that I'd like to get you guys' thoughts on. Okay. It seems like, ever since Guardian, more and more, the Awakenings are less, uh, like, pre-Awakening. Mm -hmm. Maybe with the only exception being kind of Hash, which is a little bit more pre-awakening than Guardian, Nova, and seemingly this from this trailer. I mean, he doesn't use any sort of... Even the dashes look like they're an awakening dash. He's not using, like, the portals. Yeah, the only um, one that looks like it might be the portals when he disappears and goes forward really quick. Like, maybe that's the awakened version of Rift Chain. You see it at, at 46 seconds, at 45 seconds. Where he disappears, yeah. goes for just a short distance. Like maybe everyone, I think a lot of people think that's the pre-waking dash. But yeah. So like, is this is this a good like? Because obviously, you know, we all play older classes. This is not the case with older classes. Like for the I mean, most part. Are you sure? Because like when you look at a lot of the classes, their awakings are usually vastly different. What well, do you mean? Well, like, Mayo is a prime example. You got blades, and you got a blade, and then you switch to a spear. It's vastly different. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I, I'm saying that with a lot of these newer classes, when you're awakening, you spend less and less time in pre-awakening, it seems like. Right. Whereas with older classes, you spend a lot of time in both. You spend quite a bit of time in pre-awakening, quite a bit of time in awakening. Well, with actually, the newer classes, like Guardian and Nova and kind of Hash as well, and it seems like this one as well from the, the combat footage we've seen. We, it's like uh, not a lot of pre-awakening. Me and Frost were talking about that the other day, actually, because when I was trying out uh, Awakening Grind, kind of felt like I don't need to even transition into pre-awakening much at all anymore. So it's like I feel like as they buff classes, they are starting to transition towards that. So, yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, I've noticed but, that, too, like. The newer classes are already like that, and some of the older classes, their PvE buffs especially, they like yeah. even mention in the notes like, "Oh, we noticed that it's inconvenient for Kuno to have to switch to pre-awakening, so to try yeah. to mitigate this." So from a PvE point of view, they definitely are trying to do that. I agree with you, Rizzler. PvP obviously yeah. is still different though. Like you, you, you need to utilize if you want to like actually perform. In like what is it though? Specifically. Well, on the newest classes, Nova and Sage both 
feel this i mean obviously sage we don't know yet for sure but they both look like they're trying to keep you only in awakening even in awakening yeah exactly and guardian is the same way like pretty much the only like pre-awakening stuff you use as far as i'm aware on guardian whenever you're in awakening is your uh your little side swipe thing that you do and kind of like the base movement for like little short moves to try and like get uh pre-awakened grabs off like that's it I mean, they have a bunch yeah. of little protected CCs that they use for like one v ones too. Yeah, there's a couple. Um, but yeah, not not so much. I don't know. I'm just. Though. It seems like they're they're kind of like going in this direction where it's like we want to kind of like minimize pre awakened use, mm -hmm. which is like something that I know people have said that they want before. And I remember like when Succession came out, people actually said like, I wonder if they're gonna come out with a kit that's just awakening. So you'll have just the Awakening, just the Pre-Awakening, and then the Hybrid Kit, which is like the traditional kit. But it seems like instead what they're doing is they're they're kind of pushing Awakenings a little bit more into just being Awakening, essentially. So like, fair. is that is that a good direction for them to go in? Should they try to push the older classes in that direction as well? For like, I know they're kind of seeming like they're doing it in PvE, but should they do it in PvP as well? Like, um, I mean, the I older mean, class is already established is the problem. So if you change it too much and someone likes it, like I know a lot of Sorks these days complain that their bombs don't feel very good and that all their damage is in Awakening. Um, so it's like a playstyle choice. Uh, it, it's, yeah. Like, uh, so like with with the example being like Awakening Mewa, um in large scale, I would say that that is actually happening with like um Mayo Awakening because your all your chip damage and all your useful like large scale abilities are actually in the awakening kit. There's a few, you know, little specific abilities in pre awakening that you would want to use, like Red Moon, for example, but that's essentially it. So yeah, from a large scale point of view, it's definitely transitioned to a, a more solely awakened approach. Um so yeah, I, I think you know that that assessment's pretty fair. Whereas um, that you've been noticing that, yeah, I think, I think I, that's happening with a lot of classes. I think it's okay with the new classes. My my only issue with it with the Nova is that because of the Excel and the way Nova's Awakening is designed, the kit feels really small in Awakening. But a lot of other kits don't feel that small. But it is kind of weird because, like, I don't know, Hashashin is not like that at all. Like, you can't stay in pre in just Awakening for anything for PvP or PV. You have to swap. Back and forth yeah, that's constantly. why I said like Hash is the only one that's like kind of the outlier of like the more recent classes. Like they, it kind of seemed like they went in that direction a little bit with Guardian, and then Hash they like went back to normal, and then Nova they went super hard with like that direction. Yeah. And then again, we don't know for certain because we don't have the class yet. But judging from like the combat footage we've seen, it kind of seems like this class is going to be similar to nova where like you yeah, may be much. only using one or two skills from pre-awakening essentially i mean is that a bad thing though because like yeah. well that's what so, i'm asking that's I, i'm yeah. asking if I, I that's like a so. good or a bad i think it's thing. okay think that's bad. the only part where i feel like it's weird is like i can't like let's say if this kit is mostly awakening i i can't picture using the robombs just are not they don't fit at all with the way this awakening looks <laughs> Like just really, really slow, sluggish rebombs that don't do damage. I you have like the range CC, I guess, but if you can't rift chain from awakening, it's not like you're gonna rift chain and then you know throw the spear like have it charged up since you can't do that. So I I don't know. It seems really weird to me. Like even the rebombs feel like they don't really fit. Um, some uh. of the things to think about with Sage Awakening is you're not gonna have overdrive which is the thing that gives you cast speed as you use abilities. And then when you've used your e-buff, it, it slowly resets the cooldown of your e-buff. Uh, you're not going to have Rift Chain while it's on cooldown. Uh, you're not going to have the super armor at the end of Rift Chain. And you're also not going to have the e-buff, which gives you 15 seconds of super armor. Like All of that is just totally separate. That's all succession only. Which I, I think is kind of interesting. And then all of those abilities, like... All those abilities already feel kind of slow and they're justified because they're so strong, but the absolute versions are not as strong. <laughs> so I can't imagine yeah. using 
spatial collapse and the flow Definitely in the no, absolute no version. appeal to using an awakening. Yeah, so I don't know. It's going to be kind of weird. I, I hope that I would like if you can stay in pre awaken or in awakening like 95% of the time. I just hope that the awakening kit feels like it actually has depth. If it if it feels like a small kit, then it's not going to feel that good. Yeah. But yeah, I think uh, philosophically it's fine because I think basically now at this point they're using suck and awakening to just release two classes at a time in a sense. Um. Anyway, yeah, so I mean, especially when the concepts are so disconnected. Yeah, like they were for Nova, and like they seem to be for this class. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's a I think it's a good thing. Like Frosty said, it's essentially they get to release two classes at once without mm -hmm. actually truly doing that. And we do know it's coming Wednesday, April twenty first. So three more sleeps. I'm actually so excited, dude! I can't wait. He um, it in sleeps. We should do an honorable mention. The second half of this video, um, he's in a five-man party doing what looks to be Ataraxian, the dungeon. Um, True. Do you guys want to... Uh, does it look cool, the little bit that we saw? <laughs> I mean, it looks looks like it's getting near to completion. Dude, visually, it looks so badass. The mobs look cool. I like that tile set with the little tree. Like yeah. a little bit of grass inside. It also looks pretty open, even though it looks like a cave or a dungeon. It's like it has a massive roof i just yeah. loved everyone pointing out the ancient weapon dinosaur <laughs> yeah the ancient weapon dinosaur is cool also the boss thing dude with the two uh with his two canes he looks pretty cool uh here's the question are these machines designed from the civilization from which the sage came from then or are oh, these even more yeah, prehistoric so. yeah i think that's yeah. assumed that all the ancient weapons are from his people essentially um yeah, hopefully it means hopefully this they threw this Ataraxian dungeon stuff in here because it's close to release. Uh see yeah, someone asked earlier, it's like uh, it looks like he's grinding with the Zerker. Is that because his damage is bad? <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. Probably. Yeah, he's grinding with what was it? I think it was Zerker, Ranger, Warrior, and Sork. It looks like. I think they yeah. just chose some random assortment of classes for people that they had available for I don't think it's random. Control. Those are those are four of the first five or six classes. They definitely didn't released. choose Tamer or Kunos. In their group they don't allow Tamers and Kunos. In this. <laughs> Even the devs <laughs> are like, nah. <laughs> no thanks. Alright. Well, um we can move on. But it's uh it looks cool. I, I think it looks cool. It looks a lot it looks a lot more fun than I thought it was going to. Also, I did notice his animations because this is remastered. He doesn't have a lot of the the Sparkle sparkles. or uh, yeah, the particle animations going crazy. Yeah, it's way fewer sparkles than other classes in remastered for sure. Oh, last thing on this before we move on. Um, the sound design really cool. Yeah, it sounds badass. Yeah, true. Both the Succession and the Awakening have really dope sound design, honestly. Which, I mean, I guess shouldn't be surprising because they also did really good with the sound design on Nova, but did a really solid job here. Yeah. Uh, all right, moving on. Do you want to talk? So, all right, we, we have a bunch of stuff we got to go over, but do you want, you're running out of time already. You have 26 minutes before you got to go. So do you yeah. want to talk about the GVG thing first? Uh, yeah, we can we can do that because I mean we're all in agreement, so maybe we can knock that out relatively quickly. All right. Yeah. All right. Some sick GVG changes, dude. Here we go. <laughs> Literally, um, like it's gross that they even did this. All right. So war declaration changes. Some of the rules for guild war declaration have been changed. The cost of declaring war is now uh one million silver. It says same as before, but I'm pretty sure that's not what it cost before. Uh, when other guilds do not respond after a guild war is declared, the cost of maintaining the war is consumed every 24 hours. And the cost is now guild funds, 1 million silver plus 0.5% guild funds. The number of guild funds consumed by the cost maintaining the war is additionally stacked by 0.5% every 24 hours and increases to a maximum of 3%. So after six days, um, 
you you're a broke bitch. You it costs you one million flat silver and three percent of your total guild funds if you decked on somebody and they did not deck back. Um, it also goes on to add, if one side of the war withdraws the war while declaring war with each other, the guild that has not withdrawn will cost, um, uh, will cost the cost of maintaining the war. So basically the cost will begin from there. Um, and then it says, if you withdraw from war, you can declare war to the guild after three days. So basically there's going to be a three day cooldown if you originally decked on somebody. Um, there's going to be a three-day cooldown before you can deck again. And then their note about it is, Guild Wars unfolding in equal situations are both a vitality and fun for the game, but unilateral inferior situations can also act as great st as a great stress. Guild Wars was one of the main contents of Black Desert. It was also a story of Black Desert written by adventurers, so it was difficult to improve quickly. However, as we went through the process of being together for a long time, the difference in the growth value of the adventurers increased, which also led to the growth value of the guild. Therefore, we have adjusted the monetary guild fund penalties for the guilds that wage war to increase over time so that the unilateral situation that lasts too long can be slightly improved. So, Reslar, oh. your thoughts on all this? Uh... Stop trying to kill PvP. <laughs> I mean seriously like I, there's 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 this gr grand misconception that a lot of people have that's very frustrating to me as a veteran in this game and as somebody who only plays this game because of PvP the idea that PvP is something that is bad and that is something that we need to protect people from by any means necessary. And that if you engage in PvP, like if you yourself engage in PvP against somebody else, you are A, an aggressor, and B, the bad guy, quote-unquote. Like, this, this, this huge misconception around PvP in general is, like, the most infuriating thing I've ever seen. And, like, not to, like, get to... I don't know, like, offensive about it, but these fucking snowflake steamies that have started goddamn, like, making this game become the most casual fucking thing is, like, the most infuriating thing. Like, not to go full boomer, but it, this game used to be really fucking harsh with its PvP rules, and people loved that shit. Like, yeah, it sucked whenever you fucking lost EXP for dying in open world PvP, but that's what made it, like, way more, like, shit mattered. It mattered a lot. You didn't want to die, so you had to pick and choose your battles. And now it's like, I don't know, it's just so fucking... Ugh, it is, I can't fucking... Oh, this game's becoming unrecognizable with all the things that they do to try and prevent open world PvP. Like, at this point, I don't understand why they don't just remove it, add more Arsha servers, and then say, okay, that's... If you want open world PvP, you've, you're forced to go to those servers now. Because it seems like that's the direction they're moving in, which is fucking depressing, honestly. Because the combat, for a lot of people... Even if you don't like PvP, I think a lot of people appreciate the combat in this game. Like, you may not like PvP, but you probably still appreciate the combat in PvE. So it's like, why are you trying so desperately to, like, remove your one of your game's greatest strengths? I just don't understand it. It's so mm -hmm. fucking weird. And it's also, like, there's not a lot of avenues for PvP. So, like, this constant trying to remove or, like, decentivize open-world PvP is really confusing because open-world PvP is one of the few avenues for PvP that you have at, like, all times. Like, you have RBF, which is just cancer fucking suck wizards on rooftops. And then you have Node Wars, which is a, like, two-hour at most thing in the evenings which your guild is most likely not going to be doing every single day. All right, so first, I, I have to defend Steamies here. S the Steam release was three years ago. They're not new <laughs> players anymore. 
And no, they're not. True. But this, they're not. Dude, well, these hold on, changes hold on. started coming no, after Steam. No, release. they did not. It we, did. No, the EXP loss and the crystal loss happened way no, before Steam. Before. That change but happened way before Steam. But then the karma changes launched. happened after Steam release. Yeah, the karma changes happened. But even back in the old days, the old grandpas that played the game, the boomers also hated losing everything on death, and that's why they changed it. Because you guys were all complaining about it back then as well. So it's not just Steamies, and it's Steam is literally just a fucking launcher. It has nothing to do with the personality type of the people joining the game. You could say new players, maybe, but it has nothing to do with Steam. And I to to move on to the actual crux here, I I wouldn't mind this whole thing if the entire thing wasn't built to promote actual griefing. Yeah. Like it's literally the entire thing from top to bottom just benefits people that are actually doing the griefing. Now, obviously there are cases where uh a very strong guild is decking on a small guild that can't defend themselves and they hunt them down channel to channel and and all of that and fine. And for that, I understand like having the funds um charging this, but I think that it would feel less bad if A, this cooldown was reduced to maybe a day instead of three days, and B, if all guilds were then deckable. So that way it's like, I can deck no anyone one can I hide want. Behind the- yeah, I can deck anyone I want, but it's gonna cost me guild funds, so it's not worth keeping it up forever. Then, yeah, then it would be all right. It- but this setup is literally just like, hey, if you're the type of person that goes to a spot, um, just grief someone like makes it so they can't grind and you karma bomb like this is a hundred percent benefiting you and nobody else yeah and it, it goes back to what I was saying is that like this idea that if you engage in PvP you are the aggressor and you are the bad guy and the other person is the victim it's just not fucking true in yeah. any way like people know how to exploit just because you are flagging up on somebody does not mean that you are an aggressor or that you like need to be punished or something like that like there's all kinds of scenarios in which they're good or bad or neither sometimes it's both like people that are just trying to mind their own business but they're minding their version of minding their own business is in conflict with one another so it's like this idea that we need to like punish people that uh want to engage in pvp or like use these ridiculous systems to try and protect people that don't want to pvp and in turn actually give them the power to like be the aggressor essentially like it's just so fucking irritating yeah and like a good example a good example from like personal experience is like there's this guild and i don't remember the name of the guild because it's like a three-man guild it's just a small group of friends but for some strange reason, they get an absolute hard on from stream sniping someone in my guild. And so we were permadecked on them for a really long time just because they would show up whenever he was streaming and he was grinding somewhere. They would show up and grief him at a spot so we could just quickly run over there and take care of it. And nine times out of ten, when we tried to deck them before it, they were undeckable. So yeah. eventually we were like, well, fuck it, just leave it up so that we never have to deal with the shit again, right? Yeah. The, the other thing is like... like I don't know. You're telling me that like um we're the aggressors in that case? Like we're the bad guys? They're literally stream sniping like one of our guildmates and we're the bad guys because we are like, okay, keep the deck up so we can try and help our friend whenever he's being stream sniped by literal griefers. <laughs> uh, it's just I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I I agree with you guys on the system like <sighs> Kind of like to Frosty's point, I I don't think it should be three days before you can redeck. Nope. Because this system will promote that very concept for griefing, and then on top of that, I think they should remove the fifteen minute wait time too. I mean, yep. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Like waiting fifteen minutes to get the deck going through, and you're gonna put these kinds of restrictions on this, plus a, a you know a recurring, um, you know financial. Uh, charge to keep the war up if you wanted to keep it up for more than a day you know there's there has to be some benefits to this like because right now in its current inception how they want to do this it's there's a lot of negatives that don't benefit the guild that actually needs to you know do the war deck and i get Um, that you need some time but 15 minutes is a little excessive yeah 
Uh, like maybe like, five I feel like minutes. Five. Yeah, yeah, five minutes would be plenty of time. Yeah, not immediate because I think immediate might be a little, little, you know, too, too much where you can like time it perfectly for what you want to do to like really fuck with them. But yeah. um, five minutes would be and good. To be fair, like I think fifteen minutes is just an archaic system from back when everyone had slow shit horses, where it was almost yeah. faster to just walk on foot. Yeah, so now it's like you want to give people really time quickly. to get to wherever the fight is going to go down. But now people can cross the map in like five ten minutes. It's or like, less if they all have it, compasses, depending on which yeah, it, you're in, like you know? it doesn't. The fifteen minutes is just an archaic system that kind of needs to be updated. I, I don't know. It should. I think. Like you said, it shouldn't be nothing. It shouldn't be instant, but five minutes is, like, fine. Yeah, like, people I can think... get to Star's End from, like, Hadoom or, like, Golems in five minutes. I think that would also really kind of help out with some of the griefing, too. Because a lot of times what happens with Karma Bombers is just, like, you don't want to wait that 15-minute interval. So you keep grinding, and then you keep killing them, and then eventually you have, like, no Karma, and then you're kind of, like, in this fucked position. Yeah. And or then you have to wait like five, ten minutes anyways because they kept coming back so quickly because of where the spawns are, and you just have or no it's karma like, anymore. You don't want to waste fifteen minutes of your loot scroll like grinding yeah. inefficiently because they're grinding on top of you trying to grief your rotation. So it's yeah. just like, uh, it's just I don't know. It's it's it's, it's just silly. wonky. It's not. It doesn't fit the the way the game is right now for sure. Like you were saying. Um, the other thing is, can we actually switch the uh, the financial strain to be like it's one percent based on however many witch wizards you have in your guild? <laughs> I think that would be fair. Yeah, I I don't know. Like it, it's just. I mean, let's be fair. Just... They're the ones. They're the ones winning the war, anyways, right? The more wizards you have. This is just so. part of a bigger problem, which is just the karma system in general. Which I don't know. Like I. I I just don't I I hard disagree with the idea that the person flagging is always the bad guy and needs to be punished yeah. and the person that's being flagged never... on is always the victim and needs to be protected that's just not fucking true It's never it, it's that's... never black and white like that it's probably not true. I would say a majority of the time. It feels yep. to me like a majority of the time it's the other way around. So Yeah. Like, With the way the karma system's set up, it's very rare someone just comes up flags and kills you because they get three kills and then that's it, it's over. Yeah. Yeah. The karma bombing is like super dude, the thing is that's crazy is there was that interview a while back where they acknowledged that there's an issue with karma bombing and they're looking into it and have since only made it easier to karma bomb. So I don't know why that's not being addressed. Like uh, Bloom is saying, uh, and I kind of agree with Bloom in this. He said, I'd be okay with the system and understand the system is needed. Just wish there were other systems to prevent the opposite. There's like nothing preventing you from karma yeah. bombing right now. It's like it's borderline promoted. Because again, it's the misconception that the person who's pressing fucking Alt-C or whatever it is, the person who's flagging up is always the bad guy. And the person who's being flagged on is always the victim that needs to be protected. Like, for some reason, that's the train of thought that they have and that they've had for a really, really long time now. And it's it's just not true, which, again, is, like, why earlier I said it's just another case of, like, clear evidence that they do not play their own game. Because if you played this game for, like, fucking 20 hours, if that, you would clearly see that that is not always the case. Yeah. It's just not things are not that black and white in this game. Um Yeah, anyway, o overall it's it's not good. I this system's not I'm really curious if they're going to change it cuz most people seem to agree that this is bad. Like I actually again, I don't really mind the funds. It's like everything else is well with it. The cooldown being too yeah. long and like with the funds it just makes should it be too like too exploitable. Hey guys, you're going to be able to deck everybody now, but if you stay decked for too long and you're just harassing them and they don't deck back, it's going to cost you money. Then it would be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Now I can actually get these Karma Bombers out of my spot. Yep. But if I'm griefing yep. and then just hard decking them forever, like it, it's going to cost me silver and it's not worth yep. to do because it's going to cost and my whole guild silver. C combo that, combo your idea with you know allowing the deck to go through after five minutes. I think that would be such a huge burden off that issue. Like, it wouldn't fix it by any means. 
it's like there's always going to be some griefer that's trying to exploit the system. They'll probably find a way to exploit this new setup, um, even if they do in incorporate those rule changes. But it would at least feel better to the victim, the true victim of the scenario, because they would be able to more quickly deal with the problem um, with a with a faster war deck. And then on top of that, being able to deck guilds that technically shouldn't be deckable, like as they are in the current system. That would actually be huge for dealing with Karma Bombers. Because, I mean, that's just, ultimately what they do. They usually join a guild that's not deckable, and then, or they just the, drop guild entirely. So there's that too. To put they in. just need to make they just need to make servers where you can't PvP. So that way, all the Karma Bombers can just go there and grief each other for eternity, and yeah. then just remove the Karma system entirely on the ones that. Yeah, you, know, are... you don't have to remove the karma system entirely, but it definitely doesn't need to or be just as strict make them as all like rules, basically, right? I I wanted to give context to how much silver this actually is. If you're a guild that has 10 billion guild funds, which is like literally you win two to four node wars a week to get 10 bill, that means every day once you're at this max after six days, it's going to cost you 301 million silver to keep a deck up on somebody. Every single day, which um, uh, it's kind of a lot. Yeah, yeah, adds the up quick. Of a week. And if you have thirty bill, then nine hundred million silver. I know it's you like, said you don't care that much about the funds, but like it is kind of a big deal, especially for kind of like mid tier guilds. I feel like that like oh, don't win a bunch of node wars, don't have a lot of funds. Not like, keeping the deck up for a day ultimately solves that, but yeah, it is annoying. Like, maybe, like, if you want to make it hurt a little bit more in the wallet of the guilds, if you're trying to prevent big guilds from keeping decks up on small guilds, maybe you need to make it, like, some amount based on the difference between the two guilds' guild funds. So if a guild with, like, an ass load of money decks a guild that doesn't even know to war, and so they don't have that much money at all, they don't know to war, they don't, like, mo like see Monster Hunt, anything like that, then that costs a lot of money. But if two T2 guilds deck on each other that have roughly the same amount of money, it doesn't cost hardly anything. Like, that seems like it would be a better way of doing something along these lines than what they're doing right now. It would also arguably promote guilds, like, fighting guilds that are there around their own strength, in all honesty. Eh, I don't know if that would probably be a thing, but... I mean, there's always going to be some fucking shitter that's in a lower guild that pisses off someone in a higher guild. Let's be real. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I do it I, all the time. <laughs> I just don't. It's just... The karma system and the misconceptions about, like, morality and flagging is, like, the most infuriating thing that's developed over the last, like, two to three years for me. Yeah. Karma system's been shit for a long time. They're not they're just dancing around the problem and that's that's what this is, honestly. I don't like know. literally literally, just, literally them dancing around the problem. Just make a server where you can't PvP and then tell new players and players that don't want to PvP, hey, we made these servers specifically for you guys. Go crazy, go have fun. Like, there you go. We we made it just for you. Yeah. And that way whenever they come onto a northern normal server and they try and grief you, and you kill them, and they My they whine and complain about it, and say they're going to report you for PvPing in a fucking PvP game. You can be like, dude, there's literally PVE servers. Here, here's the problem with the PVE server thing, though. Like, all well and good as it sounds, you think griefers won't go to the PVE server and grief people there? It That's just fine. Means that they won't Let them get grief each other. All. Like, here's the thing: the people, the same people who think that. If you flag, you're automatically the bad guy and an aggressor. And if you're being flagged on, you're automatically a victim and need to be protected. Those same people are oftentimes the same people that don't believe in grind spots. They don't believe in the idea of this is now my rotation for as long as I'm going to grind here unless somebody forcibly takes it from me. So like, I'm just saying they, like, shouldn't, someone... they shouldn't have an issue with someone grinding in their spot because there's there's no spots. There's no rotations. Yeah. Right? That's what they think. So go crazy. Have fun griefing each other. Um Some sometimes people just wanna like relax and just grind, so that's why they would go to that channel. But then you have some shitter that 
dislikes them or whatever that literally will just spend their entire day on your rotation fucking with your grind just to make your day you know miserable so that's the only problem with like the pve servers that i can see because you know if i really wanted to fuck with someone i would do something like that just to like if i know they're going to some safe zone space uh server like that some care bear server then yeah sure i'm gonna do you know, if I was, you know, thinking like a griefer, that's what I would do. I would go and just grind in their rotation and just like spam shit to them all day or, you know, do some shitty, sh- you know, situation like that just to make their lives fucking hell. So they go to a PvP server and then you can just bring your, your you know, your guildies and whatnot and just grief them the rest of the day. <laughs> you know, yeah. tilt them into oblivion, make them not want to play anymore. The, the people have that mentality. They do. I want to bring before Rezar goes. He's less than five minutes. I want I want him to hear this and just get his one initial reaction. He won't be able to analyze it too much because he's got to go. But um, you know, let me let me get his his thoughts on this. Um, Rezar, if you could hop into stream. Yeah, I mean, Guido, you're laughing, but you're one of the people that. All right, so let me back up to where this begins. And it's uh, it's a sign. Okay. Do stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not doing. Stuff. We chopped off one head. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Coming the just argument is super silly. Yeah, that people were sending it to me like, hey, if you know, like, do, 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 do. Oh, I'm sorry. oh yeah, but what about this? And they're like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I it, it downsides. Like, you can't always just look at the positives it would bring. Caster nerf from whatever, right? Okay, here we go. Someone put in, what about caster nerf from whatever, right? Nothing we can announce at this time. No. Mm-hmm. But do note that all that feedback has been collected and presented, and it is known that uh, there is a current issue with the state and people would like it fixed. Yeah, I mean, Uh, by now, and I kind of, especially with specific people within our community that should know this by now, and this includes some of our partners, which I won't name, but some of our partners as well. By now, you guys should know that if something becomes that big of a topic for both myself and Sharna, we're not likely to kind of shy away from it. And we have never, I have never said in neither of you, casters are perfect. Don't worry about it. It is what it is. I have my feelings about where I think that, no, I like playing caster, but it needs to be, uh, tweaked down a little tweaked bit for sure. Maybe not in the same way as other people. So what I mean by when it becomes such a big topic is like, dude, I had like 80 people send me that doc from Reddit. The elephant in the room. Yeah, yeah. Not uh, thinking that we didn't oh, read it. Oh, yours, Frosty. Which is which is silly to assume that we were ignoring it or didn't read it and stuff. But I like that people were sending it to me, like, "Hey, if you had a chance to read it, can you have it go?" And I said, "Yeah, for sure." Um, same thing with whatever videos that people have made, and it made the rounds, and uh, people had their feelings about said video. And there were certain factual inaccuracies in some of those videos. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't Biggies. detract from the overall <laughs> argument. My point I'm making is just because I don't agree with certain points of your argument does not mean that I think that casters are fine the way that they are. That is one of the silliest things to assume. Just because I attack. So, one- so here's the important thing, Rosler, that I want you to listen to what he what he's about to say next. Okay, here it comes. One of your points of your argument is super silly. Yeah, thanks for the response. Was pretty frustrating with everyone ignoring the caster talk. Dude, come in the Discord, man. We talk about it almost every single day at this point. Yeah, uh, we, we never DM- shy away yeah. from it. Also, one thing I do want to say is pre PA yeah. nerf, uh, witches and wizards were considered PA bots. Yeah, that was all they were good for. Turns out. That if you know, I want you to hear that one more time. Make sure you didn't miss it. PA bots. Pre yeah. PA nerf, uh, witches and wizards were considered PA bots. Yeah, that was all they were good for. Turns out that if you nerf protected area, you kind of force the witch and wizards to actually do stuff, mm-hmm. and that doing stuff has created. I don't want to say a monster, but like it's the the most apt. We chopped off one head, and three more took its place. You know, which means that we so. Yeah, and he goes on making a few more analogies that they are out of their cage now and, and so on and so forth. So Reza, I want your your official... You've not heard this before. I haven't shared it with you at all. This is your first actual reaction. Your thoughts on what you just heard. Uh, well, I mean, I guess, you know, even when they're not Korean PA employees, they can still demonstrate that they don't play their own game. 
<laughs> I, I mean, what, like, what is supposed to be the take? Have you ever sieged before, my guy? Like, I, what do you mean that they were just PA bots? Are you insane? Witches and wizards are still the most powerful class on T1s. Where, like, it's all gear matched and all that shit. And they were still, like, one of, if not the most powerful class on T1s before PA worked on T1s. Because it's not just PA. It's the fact that they have huge protected AoEs that do massive amounts of damage on top of having insane amounts of utility outside of PA. They have Speed Spell. They have Retardando slash Paralysis. They have heals. They have three different heals. Yeah. So like, I, are you are you insane? Have so, you played this game in the last three years? I thought it was cool to hear them mention the document. I thought it was cool that they acknowledged that PA and all like information has been sent. As, but they are aware. There's a received, lot of people complaining, yes. and I do want to defend them a little bit because from their point of view on console is different from us because. They got successions really late. Their successions came out around the time PA got nerfed. So they went from uh, all the wizards and witches were awakening to now PA got nerfed and they got succession. So it just like the whole game changed. Um, so their perspective might be a little bit different. I'm not def defending them in that what he's saying is right because it's just you're not. Giving, you're he, giving... Yeah, I'm giving a little know. context that maybe their point of view doesn't feel the same because they had fewer casters because suck wasn't out yet you know um, I also, but I to also, be fair i mean do you realistically think that even when it's just awakening that they were only no, ever no PA bots? like no. come PA on bots. like that that is that is an egregious statement that is just silly like to just assume just to say that that's all it was ever that players were just saying that they were just pa bots no, PA was a part of a multi set of problems. Like, and I, I also love that he says that, like, which again, this might be because he's on console. I have no idea. But I also love that he says that, oh, because PA got nerfed, like, witches and wizards are kind of like almost stronger, is like kind of what he was like leaning towards, right? He didn't explicitly mm -hmm. say that, but he kind of like leaned towards that. It's like, yeah, it's almost as if a lot of us, like specifically us three on the podcast on multiple occasions said, hey, by the way, if slash when you nerf PA, you need to make other changes. You can't just nerf PA, we did slap your that. hands together and say, all right, it's fixed. We fixed large scale. Dude, like, we you all have said to make more changes than just that, and they didn't, and they, they didn't. haven't. We all said it on this. I, we literally said it on the show when it first happened. We're like, this is really awesome. This is a good change. I'm excited. More. But the, I really, really hope that they don't think that this is all that needs to happen. Yep. Or it'll it'll be bad. And Rez, I do want to... It is after one for you. Are you? Yeah, I got to get going. All right, you got to get going. Um, I just wanted to get your take on that. I thought it was interesting, but kind of cool that at least feedback sent. Uh, what about that portion? Are you you feeling good about that? Maybe something will change. No. No. Okay. I didn't think <laughs> they've so. they they've known for so long. I I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I don't care if this makes me Alex Jones tinfoil, whatever. You can call me whatever you want. They are choosing not to do anything about those classes. I don't know why. They say it's because they don't want to nerf classes because it makes people feel bad. It, sure. Like, that's a fine excuse. I don't buy it personally. Call me Alex Jones all you want. They are choosing not to do anything about these classes. They've known for a long time, probably since the beginning, because people have been complaining since the beginning, that these classes are extremely overtuned in basically every way imaginable, and they have actively chosen not to do anything about it. So the fact that they're now saying, oh, yeah, feedback's been received. Well, yeah, but are you going to do anything about it? Or are we just going to get another 200 meteor nerf? Like, are, are you going, going to actually more, make, are you going to actually make meaningful changes? Are you just going to keep saying, yeah, 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 we hear you. We hear you. Yeah, trust me. No, we got it. Yeah, message loud and clear. Also, we're not actually going to do anything about it. Like, we haven't done anything about it for the last, oh, I don't know, year. Yeah. Well, to be no. fair to them, they have no say in releasing information that would suggest that no, the devs not that. are doing anything. Right. 
But it's still but yeah. we haven't gotten a change. I think is Rezo's yeah, overall no, no. point. We we haven't got a any sort of comment resemblance of a change. And to be fair, Pianer. like again, putting this in the context of console, they might be specifically talking to their console people. So that what they might be saying right there is that we know that you guys on console have been complaining about Witch and Wizard, and so we have been relaying your complaints as console players to Pearl Abyss. Which in that case, like I don't know, wow. you know I, I don't know the state of Suckwiz and, and which on console. I don't know how vocal console players are about that sort of thing. So that might be a perfectly valid and like reasonable thing to just say, like, hey, just so you know, console players, your voices are heard. But it you know, whenever you hear that as a PC player, you're like, dude. Yeah, like you guys have been saying that you know it's overtuned for quite a while. That's why you nerfed the two hundred percent, but you're just not doing anything. Yeah. yeah, you just keep saying, you just keep saying, yeah, 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 we hear you, but then you don't do anything about it. For sure. Um. All right, I gotta get going though. All right, so, man. All right, take it easy, man. Take it easy, dude. Uh, have fun at your wedding. Be safe. Yep, I'll take it easy. Later. Take it easy. So, um, yeah, I mean, so I, I don't know, like, it's good that the the feedback got through, though. Like, that's really yeah, nice some, to hear that uh, you're you're um, some feedback you're, is getting through, at least. That's good. So they're aware. At least I know that they're aware because, you know, you're well, sitting there. It just like, means they, they have know? no they have they have no excuse now where they say, no, we didn't. We've never seen this before. You know, that's that's obviously not the case. So, yeah. That's um, that's good. I just, I just wish they would, you know, appreciate the feedback a little bit more. It doesn't seem like, based on how their that reaction was, it's kind of like almost like they're brushing off, like yeah, 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 we know. Kind of like how you guys are saying, like we know, you know. But this is kind of like your guys' fault for, you know, having <laughs> us nerf this. It's yeah. Like what? Like that was a multifaceted issue. It wasn't just PA. Like. Come on, you can't be that. You can't be that dense to think that that was it. You know, like we ne no one ever suggested that was the problem. And it's like if you actually read Frosty's article, you you point out all the issues, <laughs> and these have been plaguing the game since forever. Like essentially, it's just Suck Wizard made it even more compounded of an issue. Yeah, um, and it's like that's. The the PA nerf only addressed one small element, one very tiny element to the problem. True. It's just it's just so silly. All right, you want to talk about these add-on changes? Yeah, sure. Real Let's quick. Okay, so um, wait, I'm having a hard time finding it on this list. Where are these changes? War declaration, guild drilling machine, bartering, other changes, all classes. Okay, skill add-ons. Um, so skill out is a system that allows you to apply different effects for each skill according to the preference of adventures. Currently the skill add-on system is set so that beneficial effects are applied regardless of whether the victim's defense succeeds when hitting and harmful effects are regarded as defense success when the victim guards and harmful effects are not applied. The part where the effect of some skill add-ons was incorrectly applied to the system was confirmed and corrected. So. Basically, the TLDR of this is harmful effects such as PvP, AP reduction, all DP reduction, all evasion rate reduction, all accuracy no longer apply to a target through their forward guard. Unless you want to mention the, for the whatever, too. yeah, unless for whatever reason the skill itself is actually hitting behind your forward guard. So yeah. I'm going to give a few examples because we we. We tested this on stream on Wednesday or Thursday when this came out because we were like, well, does this affect slows? Because they don't mention slows. Um, so one of the main, uh, one of the tests that I did is with Hashishin on quicksand. Anyone who's fought against Hashishin enough or plays Hashishin knows if you have a slow debuff on quicksand, uh, no matter where the target is, even if they block it with forward guard the entire time, they're going to get the slow debuff from the add-on. And if they're close enough, they'll get the slow debuff from the add-on and the slow debuff from the actual skill and be CC'd. So what I did to test it was I had a Dark Knight block just with their normal Q block. 
and I used quicksand from far away and up close, both on Global Labs and on Live Server, and can confirm that slow debuffs do not apply through Forward Guard um, on any of the abilities where it was going through Forward Guard incorrectly. Now, quicksand is kind of unique in that for whatever reason, when you use quicksand, if the halidy that's spinning during the animation is behind the target's forward guard, it'll apply the CC, the slow debuffs and everything. But if the halidy is in front of the forward guard, it will not apply the slow. But currently on live server, no matter where you get hit, it applies the slow. So yeah, yeah you will no longer get debuffs basically through your forward guard. Um, unless the skill is for whatever reason counted as actually hitting you behind your forward guard. So... There Free change. And someone's asking freeze. Uh, freezes got removed from add-ons a while back. All, all the CCs did. Those are no longer part of the add-ons. But yeah, yeah that would have fixed that problem busted. too. To be honest, it probably would have fixed that too. Yeah, that actually would have fixed that problem. Um, the so fact this that is that a was step, going through frontal guards. This is a step towards some of the annoying slows that we have to deal with it's a small step a very very tiny tiny small step yeah let's be careful with our verbiage because apparently uh you know dms and gms are taking things a lot of context if we say it solves this they think it solves everything no <laughs> the very very tiny minuscule part of the problem uh much more needed with slow stacking in general but yes this is a very positive change um yeah so i always hate i always hate when i like go to block like you know block time against a uh ability that they know they're gonna use slows on and it goes through anyways that's just so cancer like yeah where, where's the skill in that well um i don't know slows are like they're, they're just they've gotten so bad it's it's insane too because so many classes have so many slows and people stack them with add-ons yep. and everything now so it's like when i dive into a group in a group fight like just instantly i'm like my bar looks insane my butt bar yeah. looks insane and i'm slowed so much um yeah hopefully it gets changed i don't know we've talked about slow stacking before but it is a very serious issue that i think i don't I, the problem here's my biggest thing with slow stacking is that i don't think it's a system which people that are using it or taking advantage of it are are sitting there like, oh man, I love this mechanic. This is great that I can slow people so much. Like that's the thing is like, it doesn't have any of the benefits. It's like only negatives. It just frustrates everyone that's affected by it, but no one really cares that much that they're affecting other people by it. It's not like a CC, like when you get a CC, you're like, oh hell yeah. Like I caught him. Like when you get the slow, it's just like, I don't know. Having Applying slows I think is okay, but the amount that it stacks is so insane. Yeah, it's a little crazy. Really insane. Like, actually, I can't believe it's a thing. <laughs> when I get hit by, like, five... I'm like, dude, I cannot believe that the game lets me move this slow. Like, it actually feels like I'm, like, 750% overweight at yep. times. Like, it's fucking insane. So, yeah, yep. and, then, and then the disparity in where some classes, like, literally couldn't care less. Because they, they like, their movement abilities, they just don't get affected as much comparatively. Yeah, they do. Warrior, not. Warrior being like an example of that. Um, I do also want to add. Uh, there were no PVE changes on Global Labs, and I'm gonna just keep mentioning this every week because there are a bunch of classes that still need PVE changes. Um, yep. Awaken Tamer isn't super good at PVE still. Um, Succession Tamer, I think it got some help not really up to par necessarily uh kunoichi both awakening and pre-awakening not very good in pve um archers still struggle a little bit in some places with their pve uh there's a bunch of classes that are not good at pve and there's absolutely zero reason to leave them not good i i was doing some fun math the other day no actually i think you'll appreciate this uh, <laughs> okay. i did this beforehand because as nola pointed out earlier you're not supposed to math on stream it's not good so i did the math <laughs> i did the math <laughs> off stream so i had it prepared for today but i spent uh i grinded out a pen ogre ring on my on my kuno last year when right like a little while after covid started yeah i'm sure this, um, this these numbers are very depressing so it, go ahead. it's depressing so 
<laughs> if if we just say that I averaged 5k, which is the absolute high end of Kuno grinding at Sacrea, I grinded mostly at Sacrea, a little bit at Star's End. But for this uh, okay. hypothetical scenario, let's just say I was at Sacrea the entire time. I, in the amount of time that it took me to make the 80 build to buy my Ogre Ring, on a succession striker, I could have made about 107 bill instead. Oof. It could then, have been a Black Star weapon. Could have been a Black Star weapon. And then when I stop and think about that number and that difference, I remember, oh yeah, I also grinded out two pen crescent rings, two tat distortions, oh, no. and, <laughs> and about 150 bill in Kafra stones. Oh on no. A, on a Kuno. You literally could be full pen right now. I'm missing like 250 billion silver right now. I'm submitting a ticket. You <laughs> literally could be full pen right now. Like, there's no yeah. question. It's really sad. Because, I mean, you only need, like, what? You need the earrings and a belt, right? The earrings and a belt. Yeah. 250, 250 mil, or 250 billion. That could get you that. That could easily get you two, two, earring, uh, two earrings and a belt. 100%. Yeah, so I, uh, it's, it's sad. And, uh, like, I don't know, even being like 500 trash difference, I, I think is not good, but it would at least be tolerable. But it's crazy that, like, the high end of one class could be 5K or 5.1K, and the high end of another class is 7.2. Yeah, that's just that, that kind of disparity is ridiculous. It's a 50% in, like, uh, it's crazy, dude. Like, one if they got to seven point five, let's say if like some of these classes are bordering on seven point five. If Kuno is continuing to make only five k in an hour, and other classes are making seven point five, like legit, every two hours they've made an additional hour of money on me. That's it's crazy. It's insane. Like the disparity should not be that big. What? What? So North Korea. The communist, right? North Korea? Where are we headed? This doesn't feel like a podcast topic. I'm scared. I'm just saying, you know, like, you know, typically when you're wanting everything to be the same, it's kind of like a, you know, socialistic type of, you know, approach to things, right? So, um, I don't know. Everyone's confused. <laughs> it's... We're going to move on. The Maywa guy. Yeah, hit yeah, over the Maywa, head. we'll probably move on. Yeah, he probably Maywa, got grabbed Maywa by a Zerker or something. I, I don't know. Maywa moment, just let it go. That's all right. That's a, in Florida. I'm just, I'm, sure I'm they... just surprised that, like, it's, you know, from a PVE point of view, everything's not really the same. You know, I don't know. It's just, I, I'm guessing it's just in, weird. It, that, that joke gets big laughs in Florida bars. <laughs> no, they're still quiet. They're still quite even in Florida. They're like, uh, the fuck you talking about? <laughs> Dumb Maywa. Um, all right. So do what else do we have? Let's see. I think that's kind of it. That's like all the main stuff that we want to talk about. Dude, say I, I I'm uh, way more excited for Sage than I thought I would be. And I I think I'm gonna win the bet. And I feel I like I'm gonna I think you're gonna last more than three weeks, and I think that's me. That don't I win that? Yeah, but then I, I but then I think about but then I think about how the awakening and the pre awakening don't mesh at all. And if the That's gonna upset awakening you. kit isn't massive, like if it's not like has a lot of depth and different things you can do, it's gonna feel really boring really fast. I think it yeah, maybe, but I think I think when you calculate that you're gonna get an extra two hundred and fifty billion playing that cat class, you'll probably <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> but the thing is is like like if I think about on my hash machine on awakening, it's like I get like that you get the whole awaken kit plus all of the pre-awaken stuff has value or on kuno like there's like two abilities in the pre-awaken kit on kuno that are not that don't have any value at all or ninja like so the awaken kit feels so expansive whereas on nova i mean nova has utility it's just that it's so different that it's not really fun to swap but yeah i don't know like i'm actually surprised like how little people want to swap to pre-awaken with nova but i mean that's just because of like you said how unfun it is probably or how clunky it is compared to comparatively to the awakening yeah i'm swapping to my sager now i'm I'm looking at the sage kit and i'm thinking about the sage kit and i'm like all right which, which of these pre-awakening abilities 
let's pretend awakening has good damage, decent gap close, and like all right protection. Okay, let's assume because it probably yeah. is going to have all that. Probably. I mean, it has so, a grab, so it's already it's already up there, you know. Prime Ator's fist. Am I ever going to go into pre awakening to use Prime Ator's fist? I can't imagine. Or sorry, not Prime. Absolute. It'd be the lesser shit version, which, by the way, is a massive difference in what it does. The DP debuff is worse, and it does significantly less damage. Probably really? the DP the DP debuff is worse. Yeah, it goes from all DP minus twenty on the Prime version to minus fifteen on the Absolute version. Um, what? Spatial Fisher, which is Shift LMB, which gives you the accuracy buff. It's a smaller accuracy buff. It also gives you less MP per hit, and it does even less damage. Um, also, that skill is just really slow, and I, I don't see you really using it anyway. Shift D's are. I mean, unusable. accuracy buffs will really depend on what the kit's damage is like. So if it doesn't have a lot of accuracy built into that kit, you're probably going to want to opt to try to get that buff if you can. You know. So yeah, but it's that like one's not, in question. But it's not realistic to use a 10 second accuracy buff on a skill that slow where by the time the animation is over like by the time the animation is over you have you have about 9 seconds left on the buff and then you have to hope to catch that. You're not going to be able to use it in a combo. There's just no way. Not Especially not in Awakening. So you have okay. 9 seconds to catch them and combo them to actually benefit from the accuracy. I gotcha. Um, so yeah, the accuracy buff, probably not. Void gateways, you're just not. You, there's no way in hell. First of all, it's mm -hmm. it's it does like in just PVE alone, it does 100% less damage per hit and has two less hits. There's no way you're using that. Um, yeah, the absolute. I would be shocked. Ator's mark. This one I could see because it has a CC and the evasion debuff. I could see you using this one. There's the fist hitting the ground. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's pretty cool looking too as a BM skill, you know, after you're about ready to kill him. And it's cool looking, but, um, as I'm, the BM factor, am, am it's I, already got a plus. I would be surprised if there isn't a, an evasion debuff in the awakening kit anyway. And if there is, then there's absolutely no reason to use this. Um, illusion compression. This one I could see, especially if you're going to be able to use it from awakening would be really nice. Cause that's the fast, it has a stiffness on the first hit and it's like a vacuum and a float on the end. That one's gotcha. potentially usable. So, so far we have like, I'm going to say one and a half prime form shift. <laughs> that's just damage. There's no way, uh, or the, like I, God, I hope this, no, it wouldn't even be prime. Sorry. Absolute form shift. So just a lesser shitty version of form shift. Um, doubt you would use it. It's super stamina hungry. Doesn't do a lot of damage. Um, illusion expansion, maybe for a quick stiff from pre awakening because you can use just the first hit, maybe, but I doubt it. Uh, spatial collapse. There's no way in hell. Ator's energy, I guess, as an SA, and Prime Atomagia, which I actually think this one is probably going to be usable from awakening. If yeah. I had to guess. Um. Yeah. That's right. Some of these skills will be probably ones that you can transition between. So you yeah, gotta keep that in mind without sure. having that info right away that could change your opinion on some of these. But the thing is that's weird about this kit. Like when I think about other kits, you use not only for damage and pre-awakening, but for utility. You use pre-awaken for utility. And this pre-awaken kit just doesn't have utility. It's mostly just damage. Like even the CCs, they're so incredibly slow, and the only reason why they're usable is because um of rift chain giving you protection being able to hop in and out and use it quickly and hop back into rift chain yeah what wasn't like a sorka prime example of a class that did originally use pre-awakening for a lot of damage but then they buffed a whole bunch of awakening skills so that's yeah after the damage ratio can. changes and the buffs to awakening sorks pre-awakened does like compared to their awakening does a lot less damage yeah but um, yeah before all that it was one of those classes that would still primarily use it so interesting it's, but i guess my what i'm getting at is that i think this class is going to be very you're going to be an awakening Awaken heavy 95 yeah. percent of the time because they I think just didn't fair. add a lot like even on nova like suck nova or awaken nova like you still you get you benefit from having that block which on some the classes block is, is huge really strong. you have protected you when you use command opening to send out the pawns to cc is fully protected to use that ability um, you have the grab in pre-awakening. You have the wall in pre-awakening. You can still use the pre-awaken e-buff because it has a pre-awaken e-buff, a prime e-buff, and an awakening e-buff. You can use that. So it has like a bunch of extra utility. And then it has 
a couple rain like it has a range CC where you can send the pets to try to get a float. It also has um just protect like nice protected CCs. Like this doesn't even there's not a protected CC in here. Except for uh Adamagi, the forty second cooldown one. Because these all yeah. kind of rely on uh on rift chain, prime rift chain, which you won't have. I just yeah. think it's interesting. So that it's very, very like different kit. And I, I just hope that it has a lot of depth so that way you actually do feel like you can stay in Awakening and it doesn't feel bad. Yeah, I mean, also consider, um, you know, like even even though we don't know the skills yet, like you're also going to have a Bond skill you get to use. You're going to have a Bond skill in Awakening, that's true. So. It's probably going to be strong as fuck. It's probably going to be, it's probably going to make it so that block jump can be, uh, you know, a CC as well. <laughs> probably are you worried about that block jump skill no that one actually doesn't seem as egregious because it's like it looks like it's in a 1v1 scenario it looks super telegraphed mm -hmm. at least in its current inception on that preview mind you it could be vastly different who knows they might not even have five attack speed on that that demo <laughs> so <laughs> who knows yeah i don't know it's if it's anything like Hashishin's block jumps, I'm going to cry. Yeah, but this one, like, I mean, you on see stream. them throw the spear out. There's no way it's like that. The animation yeah, is just too long. Like, yeah, you, I, if you don't react I, I think to this, like, you kind of deserve to be CC'd. I don't know if it even will have a CC or if it's protected, but... I, I honestly think it probably won't have a CC. It'll probably be like a, a damage, uh, like an SA damage trade skill for, like, large scale. You dive in, do a whole bunch of damage, and you, like, dive out or you use the ability where you just throw the spear down and then you charge you you know teleport to the next pack instead or, or like a different set of people were you surprised but, or are you surprised that it doesn't have any like actual ranged abilities like there's no projectiles that at least not that it demos um and i mean kind of but it is a it is a spear so like i was saying like to me it looks more like a javelin but yeah. a javelin would suggest that they throw it so, which they do, actually, in one of the abilities, he throws it and he teleports to every yeah, mob. Yeah, he, he throws it and then teleports to you. Right. Yeah, and then he also throws it up in the sky and jumps to the like teleports to it and grabs it. So it's like I don't know why they're calling it a spear. It's more like well, a javelin. Do, do but... you consider this lightning skill a ranged AOE? I mean, it has a lot of range on it because it's a big AOE, but it's not a ranged ability. It's I not think, a projectile I think it's going to be a all. medium range class, like you know, kind of more like. Maybe more range than, like, say, Maywa's Awakening, per se, but kind of similar with a lot of the abilities being, like, more right. melee or, like, middle middle range melee. This Lightning Storm is not, like, a traditional ranged ability. It just has a big AoE. Yeah. A ranged ability is, like, I'm talking, like, Dream of Doom or Meteor. Like, it, yeah. You can't I, I don't cast, think it has anything like, like that. Like, he can't cast this Lightning on these mobs over here in the back. It's not, it's not a ranged skill, like, at all. It's just a circle AoE in front of him. It's just yeah. a massive AoE on that skill, but it's like, yeah, it's not a ranged skill. He literally is holding a javelin, and he doesn't throw any projectiles except to teleport to you. Ah, I got you to say javelin. Which I think is interesting. But, um, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't see it being a, a ranged class at all. Like, I think it's going to be, like, very dive-heavy from the looks of it. Um... Like in order for it to be effective in large scale, you'll have to play very carefully with your dive abilities because then you'll just, you know, you'll dive and die. <laughs> so Yeah. I'm really curious um, on this impaling flash what the protection's gonna be like. The one where he throws it and he teleports inside of you like three yeah. times or whatever. That one's gonna be interesting to see in like how it deal how it works with one v one or how it deals with large scale. I'm sure that's iframe. That has to be. Usually, whenever you disappear, your iframe. But of course, they've altered that on some classes. Yeah, iframe damage sounds kind of nuts for large scale. Yeah, that's why I have a feeling it might be. You're just moving too fast to be caught, kind of thing. I don't know. Like literally, when I when I first saw the image of the weapon, I was like, "Oh, this is a spear with lightning." I I actually just thought I imagined Javazon, and I thought he was just going to be throwing lightning spears. Yeah, throwing range I, projectiles. The Javazon, the old school Javazon, when you're doing cows and you're just throwing a shitload of lightning, uh, lightning fury, uh, javelins. That shit was cool. 
Could you imagine that in like large scale? You have lightning just like echoing through the entire group of people. <laughs> and then yeah. and then you just have the uh the Diablo 2 cow moo on moo. your stream playing. Moo moo moo. <laughs> moo. I think that would be hilarious. And then every time you kill a group of them, moo! <laughs> just fucking... This just cracks me up. Gotta love the old D2 days. Yeah. Anyway. um, I want to grind on this class. But not at, not at Crescent Shrine. I don't know why in all these videos they show Fogans in Crescent Shrine. No one goes here. Mansions, maybe. Yeah, this class looks fun, dude. It does look fun. It looks like it would be pretty decent at polys. Not maybe not amazing at polys, but because of the the pack the pack, depending on the cooldown, it could be pretty decent, you know. Yeah. And th with that ability, it looks like it'd be hella fun. Um. Okay, so they go up to this pack. It looks like. Oh no, they're already hitting this pack. I wonder how tanky these mobs are in this dungeon. Because they have five people attacking that's, this pack of mobs. Yeah, that's something we just we have no clue about. So it could be could be that they're really weak and the damage is being like, you know, masked based on that. Dude, it looks or I want this dungeon already. They look like Griffin mobs almost. Or Gyphon. Like Griffin. I hope it's fun. I hope this has replayability, whatever this dungeon ends up being. Yes. I really do. Please. And don't let it be boring. Maybe some like trigger events that randomly happen. They they don't necessarily happen for every every run or whatever. Yeah. How, how would you actually puzzles. how would you actually view this dungeon? Like something that you go through like like a like a standard jung uh dungeon. You go through from the start to the end and then that's it, and then you like Well, I think there Go was a again, or... didn't they say I can't remember if it was this one or something else but isn't this the one where once Ooh, ninja if, if, it, if it gets too hard you can leave with your loot or something like that or if you die you lose like half your loot or some shit like that I forgot there was like some weird mechanic like that interesting um so kind of like a do till you die kind of thing Yeah, I don't know. Kyrim says just just make engaging mechanics. If it's just five man glorified PV rotation, will be kind of sad. Yeah, my only thing with the That's, engaging mechanics yeah. is let's say they put because they said there's gonna be puzzles in this dungeon. But like after you solve a puzzle once, does it have any replayability? Do I want to go resolve the same puzzle again? It has to have some randomization. Otherwise, it's just nothing. You know. Yeah. Um. Like, yeah, I mean, I guess you go for the money, but it's like, I don't, but I still want the puzzles to be fun, whatever they are. Yeah, I, I would like to see some interesting puzzles that requires, like, all five people. Kind of like, um, not necessarily this, because it wouldn't fit the theme, but, like, an idea to kind of give an example. Like, you know, if you had, like, a human chest type thing and you had to have five players, like, stand as pieces or something like that, just, like, as a momentary thing to break up just killing mobs, but you guys still get, like, a reward for winning that puzzle yeah. sort of thing. Just something different, like, to make, you know, kind of keep things interesting um, and, you know, randomize it, you know, have... But, you know, that's probably asking a lot. They don't really do stuff like that in this game yet they started doing like little little uh tidbits of it with the alert systems in some zones but which is cool but they haven't done anything like that like like puzzles per se not right. yet all right not that it's beyond them but yeah all right let's get to the uh let's get to the comments i think that's it i don't think we got much do else. you want to this wasn't on the list but did you want to maybe talk about that uh, the uh, DR evasion video? Oh, um, I, I mean, don't it's know. Just... what did you want to talk about it? I mean, I don't know I really don't know. what to say. Your cho choices video? Oh, yeah. I knew... He's not the only one that's pumped one out though. But yeah, his is the most recent. 
Yeah, don't run off. I don't know. We don't have to talk about it. TLDR, but... don't don't run often. <laughs> no matter what anyone tells you, especially with an evasion build, just don't do if it. I, if I if I win the tournament, I'm gonna promote often everywhere. <laughs> I heard this. There's a rumor. We don't really talk about in-game drama or news, but supposedly Snake. Now I don't know if this is 100 percent true. I've only heard this, but I've heard it from multiple people now. Supposedly Snake has taken a break from Siege. Uh, I know they're being hunted down by Vertex. No, they're not. I mean, they're literally in a castle and Snake placed in that castle. What do you mean hunted down by Vertex? Well, no, <laughs> in like a GVG. Oh, in GVGs? Yeah. Are they? Well, I was <laughs> like, talking with Scarletta yesterday. Oh, well, here we go. Insider info. Yeah. You heard it here first. I mean, that's that's about the extent of the insider info, to be honest. <laughs> I thought you were talking I mean, about. I, I don't Siege. know. I'm I like, don't know. The I'm like they placed on the territory that Vertex no, is no, in. No, 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 no. It was just GVG related stuff. I I don't know oh. what the specifics are behind it. It was just, you know. I thought you were leading kind of into something like that, so that's why I mentioned it. No, I was saying there. I mean, there's just been like one of the guilds in a castle for three straight years, so it's weird the idea of them taking a break. Yeah. Do you see? Uh, let me see. Let me see. They still have it. <laughs> Ty Boom said Snake is quitting because they're being hunted by Vertex. That you got to add Dash Nayashi. Make it like a quote. Dash, his quote. Dash. That's <laughs> hold up, hold up. I did not Nayashi imply that. says that Snake's quit <laughs> quitting. I did not imply that at all. I did not oh, imply that shit. at all. That's what Nayashi said, dude. I don't know. It's funny with the... What were you going to say? Are you looking something up? Vertex uh, have, have an Ace Alpha's uh, thing on the... Uh, their guild icon. I feel like Nayashi was about to tell us something and he got distracted and doesn't remember I, what he was going to yeah, tell us. Probably. Yeah, probably. I actually did. don't even remember oh what it was. Oh my god. He's like started a sentence like, oh wait, this you know what? This is the boomer kicking uh, in. And then you like stopped talking, so I thought you were just like reading through something to find what you were looking for, and then you just well, came was, back and said I was, nothing. I was about ready to check out some, and then I started getting attacked by mobs again, so then I started grinding a little bit longer for like another minute, and then I forgot what I was going to talk about. King Sage is going to be good in 1v1? With how... Medium speed it is, it might have some outplay potential, but I don't know how much. It depends on how good the grab is. Does it? Is that the only I thing mean, that, that's going to determine if it's good at 1v1? Because uh, Wizard has a grab. Suck Wizard doesn't. No, Waken does. I don't think Waken Wizard's particularly great in 1v1. I, I mean, I think I mean, the rest of the kit I mean, matters there are way really more good. than the grab. They're really, there are really good uh, Waken Wizards, just most of them don't know how to use it properly. Oh, yeah. The grab, that is. Yeah, I, I don't think it's... It depends only on the grab. I mean, shit, dude. A lot of people hate... I mean, we just don't know enough good. about the kit, you know? Do you think a slow class... Like, I, I don't know how, how many sages you've dueled, but to me, it doesn't feel super good in 1v1, but do you think... No. It, it could be good in 1v1? Like, what is preventing it from being good in 1v1? Like, it's, it's honestly just speed, honestly. Like, I, I think it's just too easy to track right now in 1v1. Like, I literally don't have an issue with it. Like, it has the damage, so if I underestimate and I try to tank a hit, I'll just get blown the fuck up. That's one thing. Yeah. But that's just... Honestly, I feel like that's just a gear check type situation. I don't necessarily view that as a class being necessarily good in 1v1, you know? Because, right. I mean, any you throw gear on any class comparatively to yours, I mean, you you could just get chip damage down. That's not a big deal. But, like, yeah, I think the class is just a little sluggish, and it's kind of easy to CC right now. Um, in a 1v1 scenario, at least from my point of view, like I don't know how other classes are dealing with, but I imagine like classes like Warrior probably don't give two shits what they do. Um, I don't think Ninja cares. I don't think Kuno's probably really care what they do. 
Um, I don't know about DK or I think DK would probably be okay. They have a lot of outplay potential. Hammer probably couldn't care less, although magic damage is kind of like their bane. I mean, that's not, I mean, they're, they're just squishy. It's nothing good about well, damage that anymore. Too, yeah. Dude, so. They're just kind of yeah. slow. I just think that if they had a little bit more speed in their, in their succession kit, it wouldn't be so bad. I do think uh, we're obligated to mention this. Uh, for the tournament that's coming up, please stream the round of 16 PA. Please. I think they're planning to. No, they were planning to stream oh, the wait. round of eight, not the 16. Oh. Uh, they need to stream the round of 16. People want to watch the people they know and their their favorite PVPers or their friends in PVP. There's absolutely no reason not to have the round of 16 best of three not watchable. I think it's super tilting. Let someone in yeah. to stream it. And if you don't want to stream it, please, like, we want to watch these people we know PvP. We don't get tournaments often when we finally do to not have it be watchable is actually infuriating. Yeah. And it's like to put it on the actual players that are participating to stream and whatnot when it affects their performance, it's kind of like cringy. It's different if they want to do it, but it's like, ooh, I got a nail. Um, it's different if they want to do it, but you know, if they're actually trying to be serious about, you know, the fights and whatnot, you want to have the best performance possible on your PC, right? You don't want like some minuscule moment when you're streaming to like cause a frame dip that could affect you being caught. Unless you're a warrior. Unless you're a warrior. Then you thrive in that, right? Something like that. Yeah, I just, uh, I people want to watch it. I get asked constantly, dude, when I'm streaming, it's like, hey, can I watch the blah, blah, blah? Like the prelims are going on right now. Like, where can I watch it? Like, are you watching the prelims right now? Can we watch it? And it's like, yeah, they just don't let us watch it. It's just not a thing, which it just makes no sense to me. I don't know why that would not be watchable. Yeah, I kind of feel like this would be a good time to promote it. Yeah, it's like, I mean, I, kind, I guess I kind of get for some situations why you don't want to like you want to wait to weed out maybe some of the uh less serious players mm -hmm. but still i mean there's upsets that happen all yep. the time so I there are there are upsets that happen quite often um all right like uh more more than beating uh <laughs> efficacy was that is that who he, yeah. he fought I did not anticipate that at all. I dude, Morlin sleeper OP. He's been training. You <laughs> can tell he's been training. <laughs> his his title now is number one. Did you watch the fight? Sub, sub warrior. I did. I did. I watched the clip. Oh, Avenge Prophet saying if they are not gonna going to stream it, they need to stop spamming server chat to notify the twenty people participating. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like worse. It's like it's like okay, guys. Guys, we're doing something really cool that you can't see. Everyone should know. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's like right now they got the ninja fights going on for the prelims. Like I would like to see that. Ninja fights are actually interesting to watch. Yeah, they're fun to watch. But yeah, it's oop, framed up. Holy uh -oh, crap. Framed I up. Fucking teleported like twenty yards. Um but yeah, no, the uh it's really sad that they're not promoting it right now. But you know, I guess I kind of get it, but yeah, at the same time, they should still do it. Yeah, I don't, I actually don't mind the server chat itself, except that we can't watch it. So it's like the, it's meaningless information for me yep. and for everyone else. All right. Comments. For those who don't know, when we do the podcast, you can, uh, you can leave a comment on the YouTube video from the week before, uh, and we will read it on the next episode. So uh here goes uh ochacha we'll try to read it we'll try to read it ochacha says pre-awake juggernaut <laughs> runs with the shield and axe awaken runs with a jordan up um i forget what the context is for that are we talking about how people run with the weapon i don't know uh mike h says i've listened since the first one heart oh damn damn that's a long time even that's i dedication. asked you Hadn't heard even one. I've missed even I've missed some. I'm not yeah. gonna even deny that. 
Kuno says, finally caught up from episode one since I started this uni semester. Happy to say thanks to Reslar. I re-rolled to Zerker. Thanks for the podcast. It's been great during my workouts grind and when I'm doing homework, y'all the goats. Damn. Wait, they Reslar caught up from made you re-roll one. to Zerker? Yeah, dude, but he, he saw, doesn't even play Zerker? <laughs> he saw Reslar's combo on Biohack. He was like, I gotta do that. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, that's my comment about how Guardian Juggernaut was different. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Oh, I see. The the two different juggernauts. Right, right, right. The same skill, but in awakening and pre awakening. Um, Cody Shane says anyone goes to give a statement or opinion. Anyone, I don't know. Uh, Filler up premium says dear value pack game. Uh, gang, it seems like the world will be back to normal soon. Are you guys gonna do a video of all of you in the same place eventually? Dude. I'm gonna definitely post a video of me getting breakfast again, you know, because uh, that's no longer gonna be controversial. So us doing a live podcast would be kind of fun one day. That'd be actually pretty interesting. That'd be fun. Uh, maybe one day. Yeah, I mean the world is going back to normal, but the problem is, is we still have to meet up with someone from Florida. True. Um, there's no, there's no changing that. That's forever no... not going to be normal. Yeah, that can never be patched. Uh, Drainer says, <laughs> okay, so. Uh, I'm one of those seasoned noobs that spent the main change coupon on Sage. I'm pretty sure Sage will become my my key for free Aquaman entry, and I'll just re-tag or I'll just tag back Striker of Valk. Honestly, Suck Sage feels so gross compared to what I played before Striker. Yeah, Suck Sage is I don't know. Well, I mean, when you compare it to the best PVE class in the game right now, I guess it would feel that way. Inverted colors, and this is what I got. Oh, what is this? Oh. Dude, see, this thing would look way cooler if it was blue instead of yellow. Oh well. Uh, TS, I'm new to the game and I want to ask you guys uh, how you guys find the best builds for each class or find the best armor slash weapons. I'm sitting with a level 44 ninja not knowing if I'm putting my points into the best skills or not, lol. Um, yeah, I mean, I would just look up on YouTube when you're new to the game, new to a class, just look up on YouTube guides. Um, there's a bunch of skill guides and stuff. I know Yellow has a bunch of guides for Ninja. And as far as like what to build, I mean, basically, if you're new, if you're you're trying to get Narshalian gear or Narshalian gear, whatever it's pronounced, if you're in Seasons, you're just trying to get Tuvala, everyone's basically doing the same thing. And then, uh, I don't know, like at once you have all that, and you're asking people for gear advice and stuff like you'll know piece by piece you don't really have to know exactly what to do right away you just need to like learn it as you go but yeah, yeah. there's a bunch of gear guides and stuff you can see what other people are doing ask them why yeah it's hard to say like just a general way like oh this class should do this this class should do this because everyone's opinions are different um take choices video for example uh yeah, everyone's jordan's gonna have their own opinion yeah Jordan Dodge says it does seem uh, they don't want people C swapping for PVE along with Kuno buffs like you mentioned. The PVE Sork buffs did the same. Kind of phased out some of our pre awaken combos for grinding. Uh, Jordan Dodge also says also as a fellow Floridian I feel for Nayashi. Melbourne, Florida by the way. Or for the win. Wait what, what was that last part? Melbourne, Florida for the win. Oh gotcha gotcha. Says yeah. he feels for the Floridian. He feels for you. Good, you know, we got to stick together, you know, those Floridians. There's, yeah, there's only, I, I would say there's only a few of us, but apparently there's a lot of us. A couple of you live there, yeah. <clears throat> Not with yeah. good ping, though. Uh, we, got a, we got like, apparently like three million more uh, residents than uh, New York apparently now, so. Oh, shit. We're the big boys. Dude, are you going to share the big news with, this, with the podcast that you're, uh, you might be getting fiber here soon? Oh, Actually, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 I can share that. So we uh, recently uh, got a bit accepted on a house and uh, we're going to be moving. We're moving to a little bit farther, about almost like an hour away from where I currently live and be having our own house now. It'll be nice. And then on top of that, because of where we're living, we have access to a uh, different Internet provider and they actually have fiber optics. So. We getting that gig, gig, gig upload, gig download. That's gonna be fucking sweet. Yep. Can't wait. I can't and, wait to complain about my new internet. And I actually hereby promises to never complain about desync ever again. Wait, hold fixed. up, hold up, hold up, hold up. What? 
just because my upload download is really good, that doesn't necessarily mean about ping being an issue still. I mean, I'm still connecting the California servers. Right? Yeah, so. but it's like a straight shot with the speed of light through that fiber I hope connection, so. you know? I hope so. I really do hope so. It, if I will be the first to say, like, if it's clean and it's like improved my situation with ping, I'll be like, I don't know why I was complaining happy. this whole time. Then you can Grabs finally are, go back. Grabs to aren't a, a problem. Grabs are fine. <laughs> then, you, then you can go back to Overwatch full time. That's what the, Nayashi really wanted to do. Play Overwatch. How did you all know day. I played Overwatch? Because you're a Maywa. Wait, what does that even mean? Well, Maywa's always played simple games before. Oh my god. Uh, Talented Sniping says, uh, I don't know why you guys find streaming on YouTube interesting. LOL, if you pay attention, Twitch fucks something up basically every week. People on YouTube are really starting to foe well, and apparently it's easier to get discovered. See, I'm not buying the easier to get discovered thing. I, I'm just finding it interesting because it's new and it's hard to compete and YouTube's doing an all right job of it so far. But it's very difficult to discover. Like I was watching a uh, Leaf stream the other day and, and he was like looking at the YouTube streaming section and it's like, it's not easy to just stumble upon someone new. It's actually like kind of annoying the way the interface works. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't. I think a lot of people have been, I mean, yeah, more people are like trying to give YouTube an opportunity to, you know, watch streams and whatnot. But uh, I like for me personally, I don't ever go on YouTube to check check for BDO streamers or anything. I know there there are some. There's even some like KR players and whatnot that do YouTube, but mm -hmm. for streaming. But uh, like, I don't I don't ever see myself like going to YouTube to find a stream. It's just I don't know. It's just not. It doesn't feel normal to me yet, I guess. I I don't know. Yeah, I um I I mean I'm interested in the YouTube stuff, obviously. I, I think it's interesting. Um but any new platform is interesting. I mean, I don't know, other companies try to do it, cough Microsoft and they they fail. So yeah, it's interesting. Um Abraxas KB says, yeah, I also think a lot of new players pick DK as a starting class and at least 80% of my IRL friends that tried out the game start as a DK and a lot of streamers I see make DKs as their first characters. Yeah, it's the anime character. It's the closest thing we got. I guess ninja kind of, but people like females for some reason in this game. Uh, the Musassin <laughs> says, internet, don't fail me now. He's talking to you. He's probably talking to me. It's... Twitch. Oh wait, did he go the prelims? Is that did he was that on like a weekend? When did he come? Uh, five days ago. Oh no, never mind. I was gonna say maybe he was in his prelims. <laughs> That's why he said it. Because yeah, he's I fighting don't... Claude, I think first. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not too sure. Uh, Blood Wolf says, "Who cares? Sage will just be a puddle of melted ancient stone after it runs into a succession wizard like every other class." <laughs> oh man! A puddle of melted ancient stone. It's very specific. Oh my god, dude! It is pretty specific. I don't know. Do lightning counters lightning? You know. Uh, Tom Marashu Marushka. Uh says i believe the main character defaults to the first character you made but i can't remember very well well my first character ever made was a valkyrie no it was really? a, it was a musa and then i deleted the musa because at the time i think i only had two character slots and i made a valkyrie oh uh, i thought you you were gonna say i deleted the musa because i could feel myself start to complain well that was that back then when when I made the Musas when Musa was brand new, and they actually had a right to complain because DP didn't affect their defensive stats. Remember? Oh, there's yeah there, <laughs> that there's bug that. on launch. That that was yeah. uh that was definitely pretty rough. Now they're overpowered. They're just dumb. Uh, oh man. Uh, Eamon Killian says, "Can you reduce the size of the patrons box, please?" Reduce the size. Is the size too big of the patron's box? We'll look into that. We won't be able to do it for this episode, but we'll look into it for the next one. Um, I'll have a discussion with Rezar and see if we could do that. Um, Tilter321 says, I'm selling my pen Blackstar because I'm basically addicted to gambling in this game. So every time I have 335 mil, I buy outfits for Krons to tap for pen. I don't enjoy PVE or life skilling enough to put in the effort to save up to buy all my gear either so the time it takes me to get a pen weapon or armor is super long which is making the progression feel pretty bad for me 
The way I see it, I sell the pen, pen Blackstar now, get full pen, and then progression is only RNG for accessories, which are much more doable than pen gear, while the rest of my progression is guaranteed with just putting Caffers into my gear. I don't even play succession, so having all this AP on my main hand isn't super worth to me either. Down the road, I might enjoy the grind again, and then I'll be in a better position to make silver than I am right now. So it would make it, it would make getting a pen black star again easier. I know it's not optimal or ideal, but I've never really cared about doing things the optimal way if I'm not having fun doing it. True. I mean, true, true. I agree with that, except for that part where he said it'll make getting pen black star easier. <laughs> There's no way of making that easier. Well, I think he's saying he's going to have okay. a bunch of gear, so grinding up for one in the future, if he ends up yeah, liking grinding, won't be that bad. I know, but you're still grinding 100 bill. There's, there's nothing easy Maybe it'll be min it. price when he does it, dude. It'll be 10 bill. 10 bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never know. Dude. The dreams. That's what I'm hoping happens before I get to 100 bill. It suddenly just tanks to 10. Yeah, and then you can you know, just buy your next accessory. Is that it? Yeah. Titan Squirrel says, as an ex sork my only problem with nerfing their new skill is that it really is so effing fun to use that i almost didn't roll off the class wait almost didn't roll off the wait class. you almost <laughs> didn't so I it didn't quite keep you there it says i still did but i'd rather see nerfs to other parts of the kit if that skill needs any justification because it's awesome ps am i the only one surprised to see sage is a papu in awakening because you didn't even mention that how is sage a papu in awakening also um it wasn't released when we did the podcast last week and it's also not a papu it's that's just a lie this ps is a lie this whole ps is a lie <laughs> we didn't mention it because it's not true <laughs> it's a it's a <laughs> bold-faced lie uh <laughs> yeah no it, i don't think the class needs to be nerfed i'm sorry right now sork is not in a spot where it needs to be nerfed it just doesn't not that skill not the new skill not any of the other skills not right now. There's other things. Bigger fish to fry, they say. Uh, Sork is not up there right now. Sorry. Uh, the Twisty says, EU has savage shies. LOL. I believe it. The Spoon Elite says, Sage could be a bit like Pantheon from League of Legends. I'd like to see him with a gauntlet weapon and it form different weapons. I know you could argue that has been done with Nova Awakening. You couldn't argue that. That just is a fact. That's not arguable. <laughs> you couldn't argue Apparently. that that happened with the Nova. That is what happened with Nova. They got a gauntlet that changes into different weapons, um, but I think could easily make it distinct enough to make it unique. I think uh, they could do a lot with different fragments of the Javelin moving and re uh, reforming along with similar vein of the key. Well, they did not go with your suggestion, Spoon Elite, and it is a... It is a javelin through and through or a spear whatever you want to call it and it does not look like it changes shapes um it is just that weapon he manipulates lightning with it uh frank's 80 says even if pa doesn't uh i think no it's what he means to say doesn't know how to nerf suck whiz they could at least give it some small nerfs to start like remove stiffen and kd from meteor the bound on voltaic and sa on frigid and then wait a while to take feedback on it i don't know why they have to make a class perfect in one balance change. Fair. Uh, I mean, yeah, I can't argue with that. They should do something. At least show that they're looking into it. Yeah, you know, dude. Ha get player feedback based on the small changes that they do. If people are like, eh, you're not doing enough, blah, 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 then they'll look into more, you know? Yeah. Hazro saying, dudes, imagine the Arsha skin on the Cabilius, or Cabelius, the weapon. That would look sick, dude. That weapon looks so cool. I actually cannot wait. It looks so much better than the cube from Pre-Awakening. I, I was hoping the cube was going to be big, but it's a tiny little cube and it looks dumb. I, mean, I, I still stand by my statement. They need to really look into how spears and javelins are made because that, that design. It's I mean, a, I, get the, I get the reason why. It's, a, it's a basically a lightning bolt. but It's a janky javelin for sure. But it looks cool. like, just think of the aer the aerodynamic nature of it. Like it, that's gotta be awful for trying to throw straight. It looks really cool in game. Yeah, it does. It, it does. actually does. It looks so badass in game. Oh, we'll um, give it that. Aesthetically pleasing. Eumenidai says, have the amount of disconnects in AOA been mitigated? Also, do you know who is casting the round of eight and forward? I heard Vert is helping cast. I don't know if anyone else is. Yeah, I think he is probably the sole one 
I would highly doubt he is the only one, but I know he is currently the one that I am aware of. And, I haven't uh, heard anyone yeah. else at this point. And TriConnect says happy, out, happy birthday, Frosty. Thank you, dude. Happy birthday to me. Appreciate you for remembering. Um, man, that's that. That's, that's an old it. bitch now. Did you want to talk about anything else before we head out? Should we take questions? I mean, it is a shorter stream. You want a duel for spot? <laughs> we sure, I guess. Dude, I wish you could queue up with friends into RBF and be on the same. That team would be no that what. would be pretty fun, actually. I mean, you can kind of do it, but it just takes a lot of effort to make it happen. It's so imbalanced already. Yeah. Like, anyway, so who cares if one side's loaded because of friends? <laughs> do you True. think you think Sage is going to get a succession outfit as well? I think so. You kidding me? I don't see our I don't see our um, our costume team at PA really doing anything else right now. So. <laughs> they're totally free. They're totally free. Their their schedules are open. Yeah. Um. Let's see, is this the guy? Let me try to find. There's a new. There's a new Kuno outfit that came out recently, and I can't remember who made the video. Now I gotta now I gotta dig deep to find it. Whatever happened to Bloodstorm history. outfit? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened. The Nuver outfit, right? I don't know what the hell what's taking them so long on that. Hopefully they get back to that because I actually really want to see it. I want to see how it looks in game. Alright, let me find this outfit. Yeah, there's a new Kuno outfit and a new Guardian outfit. And the Kuno outfit itself I don't really like very much. But the um, but the weapon is really badass, and then the guardian outfit looks. Here it is. Hey, I'm actually getting an important call right now, so hang okay. tight for me. All right, I'll hang tight for you, dude. All right, oh wait, hang on me. So this is the Kuno outfit. It's not particularly amazing, but it looks pretty all right. I get like if it's dyed, it might look kind of cool. Um, but the weapon looks really freaking badass, and then the guardian outfit that it shows looks really badass. I actually think the guardian outfit looks so good. So. The sword is just whatever. I don't know. Short sword looks whatever. But the chakram looks so fucking cool. Like, I think the chakram actually looks really, really good. That thing looks epic to me. I like it a lot. Um, That weapon looks really cool. And then the guardian outfit is like, actually has some pants. So I'm a fan of the guardian outfit. I can't wait till we get this guardian outfit. See some actual, like, battle guardians. I don't like the helmet. But I think the armor and the cape and the pants look really cool. The boots are kind of dumb. The shoes. But the armor and the cape look so sick. This guardian outfit actually looks really good. The person that doesn't want to wear pants is glad to have pants. <laughs> yeah, I don't want my freaking like strong, like my powerful warriors to be like wearing a skirt. It doesn't make any sense. It's never made any sense. Not to me anyway. It's never made any damn sense. I don't know. No, there's no Musa one. Of course not. We don't do Musa outfits around here, man. Dude, those shoes are the worst. I know, they're so bad. I know, they really are. They're so bad. I don't know why. I don't know why they do that. Dude, they need a revamp Garmoth's Nest. No one goes there.
Didn't they show the guardian weapon? No, it didn't. I don't think it's a weapon. I think it only has an outfit. There's no weapon with the guardian one. Yeah, it has no weapons. Yeah, I don't know how long Nayashi's going to be. Let's see if he's messaged with an ETA. Uh, yeah, no Vel, it's, er it's early today. Dude, I really, I want, I want Sage Awakening so bad. She beats you the, to death with her thighs. All right, I'm going to close out the podcast. Um, thank you guys. Thanks to the patrons for uh, hanging out with us and supporting us. And thank you for everyone for watching. Uh, make sure Rezar had to leave a little bit early. Make sure you check out his Twitch. He is uh, twitch.tv slash not Rezlar. Nayashi is twitch.tv slash Nayashi underscore NA. I am twitch.tv slash so frosty. Um, this guy asked me what I'm doing. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, uh, thank you guys for supporting us. Appreciate it. Uh, we will see you guys next time on the next podcast later, everybody. You know you're mine.